Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker here. It is Tuesday, March the 19th, 2019, and I'm back for another video, this time to discuss uh, the best offers, um, exist them on eBay, whether or not to accept the best offer, and how to avoid problematic buyers before they buy from you. I think that's so important, and sometimes you'll have buyers that send you nasty messages, or they try to tell you how to do your business, and some don't like your prices, or they don't like your shipping. I don't get that many of them, but I will get one every now and again that will that has an attitude. Uh, sometimes they don't have attitudes that you can see, but they are problematic buyers, and when they make an offer to you, you have a chance to fully vet them before accepting the offer. So what you're looking at here is an offer that I let expire that came in a couple of days ago. And this is on a, <coughs> excuse me guys, this is on a Carhartt work shirt, a, a short sleeve shirt. I bought two identical shirts last year. Um, they're both size large. One sold almost right away from um, close to my asking price. They gave me a very respectable offer. And uh, that was probably about a month into when I had it listed. Then the second one has sat around for about eight or nine months. And now I've got an offer on it of $10. As you can see here, I'll go ahead and zoom in the screen so you can see the screen. You can see here that there's an offer of 14 or my price is $14.69 here. But they've made an offer of $10. And at the same time, we have four buyers that are watching the item, and two offer, other offers have been automatically declined. In other words, they fell below my threshold. You can set thresholds where if somebody offers you less than what you would take for the item, then you will, you will not see it until you go and actually look at your item and evaluate your item. But you won't be sent those offers via email or the messaging system on eBay because they're below your threshold. Now there's two trains, uh, two uh, modes of thought on that. Some people like to get all the offers because they want to convert this low baller into a, a buyer, but I've not had real good luck with that. And you're usually inviting disaster if you do that, at least in my experience. Now maybe that's not true for you, but at any rate, I just want to have a smooth experience on here as possible, and the best buyer is one that leaves good feedback, that's otherwise quiet, uh, they don't cause any trouble, <laughs> and they don't lie about your item and file an item that is described, which just hurts you as a seller. So at any rate, I uh, vetted this buyer, um, wanted to see if it was worth accepting the offer, so here... Um, he has feedback left for other. We check this link right here, up here, and we want to see if he has anything for sale. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this so we can better see it. It's this link right here. Um, he's got 100 feedbacks. He's got 100% feedback, 5 for the month, uh, 23 for 6 months, and 86 for 12 months. So it's obvious that he's not buying as much now that he, that he has been. Uh, what kind of comments has he left for other people? This is feedback for others. He has worked for me, quick response and shipping, over and over again. When you have to work with the buyer, that means there's some sort of a problem. I mean, that's usually when they say, work with me. So, you know, I don't have the opportunity to talk to the sellers here, but it just seems to me that Maybe he put in for a return. Maybe he wanted a partial refund because he says the product wasn't right. It could be anything like that. But what got me to think that this was probably um, a problematic buyer is he puts a couple of negative comments and a positive feedback. And that type of buyer nobody really needs. He has described as extra large, nowhere near, closer to small. It was a positive feedback, but... You wonder if it resulted in a return. Probably did. The next negative comment in a positive feedback was average. Try contact seller multiple time over other items. No response. So uh, that's what you have on this one. You probably don't want to deal with them. So what I did was I ignored his offer. I put him on my block buyer list so he wouldn't, you know, couldn't buy from me. And uh, the item's still uh, listed and somebody will buy it sooner or later. 
I'm not, you know, I just don't want to want disaster for a sale. So anyway, uh, next up is I'm going to take a look at the current offer situation right now. I've got three offers pended. I've got a CJ Banks 3, um, 3X Women's sleeveless shirt. Let's go ahead and zoom in so you can see what these are. I've got a pair of jeans that I just listed this month for $24.99. I've got a best offer. It's not a very good one, so I'm going to let it ride. The buyer was so-so. Uh, this one here, the buyer, there could be some red flags. The offer was way below this $46.98. This is a vintage, new leather NIV Bible and it's got it's a red letter edition it's got Bible helps it has a lot of nice features so it's definitely worth 40 to 50 bucks maybe more but I think I you know based on the comps I put it up for between 40 and 50 and right now it's at 46.98 um, it's not a very old listing and speaking of uh, these nicer uh, you know vintage Bibles in good shape you know, if you got the right one, they can sell for sixty, seventy, eighty dollars, and sometimes higher. So, in and of itself, that's all well and good. But when I vetted the buyer, the buyer also sells these same Bibles. So it could be a situation where she wants to swap it out and swap out. And I think she had the same Bible listed in her store. So that's a red flag, and I haven't done anything. I haven't blocked or anything. I just simply haven't responded to the offer, and I'm going to let it ride. So, you know, I could block her, but I'm just going to let it ride for right now, and maybe I'll bump my price up a little bit to discourage her from paying the full asking price. Uh, there will be no reason why she would want to swap out the Bible. Well, there could be. Uh, these people, are they know how to rig the system, they know what they're doing, previous sellers. Um, sometimes they're not above board. I had a situation like that with the coin, if you guys remember watching my video, where he was actually selling the same coin that I was. And when he got my coin, he described that it, he said it had a milk spot on it. It most certainly did not have a milk spot. I know that for a fact. And he was trying to to defraud me out of my coin and send me back an inferior coin. And I fought fought him tooth and nail. eBay decided in my favor. I kept the money and he didn't send it back. So, and this was an experienced seller with 100% feedback that happened to be selling the same coin I was and his coin wasn't as good as mine. So, when you feel something with your gut, your gut is usually right. So, there you go. So, anyways, I've got three items. I'm going to entertain offering on this one, uh, accepting your offer or countering offering. I've got three offers, 116 watches of 500 listings. So we're going to go and, and check out this offer here. Um, we're going to go ahead and move in on it. My price is 15.13. She's offering 10. Her feedback is 430. It's 100% feedback. And before I hit accept, decline or make counter offer. I'm first going to see if I have the item, which I do. And then we're going to vet we're going to vet her and see if it's worth our while. So here is the feedback page. You see up here where she's got 100% feedback over the last 12 months. Over here, she's got uh, nothing for sale cuz I clicked on that link. It'll show you if they have things for sale which I find is helpful. I didn't really know to check that before, but trust me, it just cues you in all the more if you know if they do. And what the sellers have said to her were all positive. So in this case, I'm going to go to the next screen, which is feedback left for others, and it's all positive. She says the same thing for, for seller after seller, but she left six in the past um, month. And we're going to go up here, and she's been on since 09, so now she's buying some stuff. And, you know, it's good feedback. And let's put it to you this way. My item's been sitting there since February. This person has left nothing but, but good feedback for her buyers or her sellers. And I want to move the item out of my store. I've had it for a year. It's been there long enough. And, you know, it would be nice to get more than 10 but I'm not losing money on it because I paid, I think, 
95 yeah 95 cents for it so I'm still making money on it it's just not as as good as I would have hoped so we're gonna go ahead and accept this offer and we'll go back to that screen here and we'll click accept this is a screenshot so it's not gonna do anything um, and then from there I'll send her an invoice and hopefully she'll pay and we'll be all uh, all done so that's kind of my process as I go through offers I think offers give us an extra opportunity to look at buyers and the only thing bad with about offers is they don't have to pay right away uh, you can set your parameters to have them pay within two days if they don't pay within two days eBay can automatically open a case against them they have four more days to pay if they don't pay the case is closed and the item is relisted and then any fees that you incur will be refunded by eBay uh, you could let it go longer but honestly time is money and I want to get my item listed as soon as possible and when and people don't pay on an offer that I've accepted I usually send them a note and say hey you know if you've changed your mind about the item and you want to cancel please let me know and I'll, I'll go ahead and do that for you without any further action on your part that way uh, they won't get any kind of defect on their account and I can resell the item so that's it anyway if you like videos like this please give me a thumb up leave a comment below Thanks, and go make it a great day.